Hey, I'm Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to find lowest common denominators. But before we get started, we've got to get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah. All right. Now, in this pre-algebra course, we are only going to introduce the concept of finding lowest common denominators. Therefore, the numbers we use for our denominators will be relatively small. They're not going to be like 931 and 657, right? I'm going to save those denominators for his exam. What? Never mind, Charlie. All right, let's get started right there. Two thirds subtract three halves plus five sixths. Now, notice here the denominators are three, two, and six. Now, to find the lowest common denominator, ask yourself this question. What is the smallest number that three, two, and six divide evenly into? Here's a kung fu move. Always start with the largest denominator and check to see if the other de denominators divide evenly into it. Because if they do, like in this case, that is the lowest common denominator. Now, if six did not work, remember six is our largest denominator, you would try a multiple of six. Meaning, if six didn't work, try six plus six, which is 12. If 12 didn't work, then try six plus six plus six, which is 18. So in this pre-algebra course, that's a good way of finding the lowest common denominator. In this case, 6 was our lowest common denominator because all of our denominators divide evenly into it. So all of our fractions will be made to have a denominator of 6. Well, how do we do that? Remember, we multiply each fraction by 1, but 1 is written in a special form, right? So here we have 2 thirds. We're going to multiply by 1, but we're going to write 1 in the form of 2 over 2 and multiply across the top and bottom because that makes our denominator on the bottom 6. And so we get 4 6. Now 3 halves. Well, again, we're going to multiply by 1. But 1 is going to be written in the form 3 over 3 because in the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. And that's what we want. But remember, if you multiply the bottom by 3, you have to multiply the top by 3. And that gives you 9 6. All right. Now 5 6 already has our common denominator, our lowest common denominator. And so we leave it alone. And remember, when we add and subtract fractions, our denominators have to be the same. And remember, the denominator does not change. It remains at 6. So we only work with the numerators. Multiplying fractions is easy, because multiplying, you go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. You don't need the same denominator. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Now, we perform our calculation. 4 subtract 9 is negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Ooh, we have 0 in our numerator and 6 in the denominator. Well. What does 0 over 6 equal? What is 0 divided by 6? You remember our pattern that went like this, Charlie? OK, it has to work here. So 0 divided by 6 is 0 because 6 times 0 is 0. So if you have 0 in the numerator and a non-zero number in the denominator, that fraction is equivalent to 0. OK, now let's try another one here. 2 thirds subtract 3 halves plus 5 fourths. Here, the denominators are 3, 2, and 4. What is the smallest number that a 3, 2, and 4 divide evenly into? Remember, I said start with the largest denominator, 4. Do the other two denominators divide evenly into 4? No, they don't. So try a multiple of 4. Try 4 plus 4, which is 8. Now, Charlie, does a 3, 2, and a 4 divide evenly into 8? No. So try 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. Now, Charlie, does 12 work? Yeah. Yes, all those numbers divide evenly into 12. Well, what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that 12 is the lowest common denominator. It's the smallest number that a 3, 2, and 4 divide evenly into. And it also means that all of your fractions can be multiplied by 1 and make those denominators all equal to 12. And so here we go. Let's take 2 thirds, multiply top and bottom by 4. Remember, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And notice we get 3 times 4 in the bottom, which is 12. 2 times 4 is 8, and that's our numerator, right? OK, for our next fraction, 3 halves. Here, to get a denominator of 12, we need to multiply top and bottom by 6, because in the denominator, 2 times 6 is that 12. But on top, 3 times 6 is 18, so our fraction is 18 twelfths. And now for the 5 fourths, to get the denominator of 12, we need to multiply top and bottom by 3. And so 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 3 is 15, so that fraction becomes 15 twelfths. And now, our denominators remain unchanged. 
This is always the case when you're adding and subtracting fractions. The denominator does not change. And now we work with our numerators. We have 8 subtract 18 plus 15, and that's 5. And so our answer is 5 twelfths. There you go. Now let's look at these fractions. We have 3 fourths subtract 1 sixth plus 3 eighths subtract 3 halves. Don't get scared. Our denominators are 4, 6, 8, and 2. What is the smallest number that 4, 6, 8, and 2 divide evenly into? Start with their largest denominator, 8, and see if the others divide evenly into it. So Charlie, do all those numbers divide evenly into 8? No. No, they don't. So let's try 8 plus 8, which is 16. Does 16 work, Charlie? No. No, because 6 will not divide into 16, right? So let's try 8 plus 8 plus 8, which is 24. Now, Charlie, does 24 work? Yep. Yes, it does. All right, Charlie, so therefore the lowest common denominator is 24 because 24 is the smallest number, lowest number, that all your denominators divide evenly into. So all of our fractions will be made to have a denominator of 24. Well, for 3 fourths, 4 times what number is 24? It's 6. Therefore, we need to multiply top and bottom by 6, and that will change that fraction into the fraction 18 over 24. Let's try 1 6. Here, we need to multiply top and bottom by 4, because in the denominator, 6 times 4 is 24. Of course, you've got to multiply the top by 4, and that fraction becomes 4 24 For 3 8 we multiply top and bottom by 3, because in the denominator, 8 times 3 is 24. That's what we want. In the numerator, we have 3 times 3, which is 9, so our fraction is 9 24 And for our 3 halves, we need to multiply top and bottom by 12, because in the denominator, we see 2 times 12, which is 24. And our numerator is 3 times 12, that's 36, so our fraction is 36 24 And now we're ready to subtract and add. Remember, our denominator remains unchanged. We only work with our numerators. And we have 18 subtract 4 plus 9 subtract 36, and that's negative 13 over 24. Remember, a negative divided by a positive is negative. So if we want, we can put that negative out in front and say it's negative 13 over 24 and make that our final answer. So there you go. That completes our introduction to fractions, part four. I hope to see you again soon.